All right, back to uh, back to the Trey McBride deal here. So to set this up real quick, we have a this league was the same St. Brown league, two point per tight end. You can start five t- tight ends. Right. There's four su- there's four flexes and a super flex and a tight end spot. So you literally could start six if you didn't have a quarterback and you had enough tight ends. So you right. can be knee deep in tight ends, dude. Right. So. We kind of talked about some theory and kind of like some pillar ideas of trading for the at the, the elite asset over there. Well, this is still elite asset. But in this regard, the reason that I want to talk about this one was basically just it seems very basic and rudimentary, but I don't think a lot of people do it all the time. Like you need to be looking at your league settings, your league scoring and your awareness and checking in on the leaders in your league every year, half year, third of a year, whatever, and see who's scoring points and how they're scoring. Cause you might've not missed something or not realized how much even 1.5 ads. Cause I know some people will poo poo that sure. shit, but that's, that's a dumb approach. I'm telling you. And two point is even crazier. And the reason we've gone hot and heavy on tight ends is because we saw that right off the rip. And we saw that there, there was, they weren't quite as valuable as they should. So we said, Hey, we're going to, we're going to grab a couple of these a keeps them out of other people's hands and B, you know, you, (laughs) you catch five balls. That's like (laughs) catching 10. (laughs) That's what what, two two points mean. All right. So every good dynasty podcast out there at some point has either had a guest on or taken the time to do like how to play dynasty. And it even, even in a redraft setting, but like, what does it mean to look at your settings and look at your scoring? The two point thing is is kind of like a niche, right, obviously. For so, sure. and and one point five tight end is becoming it's very becoming very norm, popular. So we're not too far off. It's not far off. But if you go in there and you sort your league's points and who scored what into in one point five tight end, obviously a little bit a little bit different. But just a broad view. Follow me here as I paint this picture. A, a, a three hundred point fantasy point season from a quarter from a running back or a wide receiver, obviously, in a tight end is splendid. Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen often, but every year there's a running back or two and a and a wide receiver or three that get to that 300 number plus three hundred plus some points. Might even touch a four hundred yes. if it's one of those crazy seasons. Right, CMC will hit a four hundred. Those kind of guys just hit a four hundred. Yeah. So last year in this league in two point tight end premium. One running back did it, CMC. Three wide receivers did it, and four tight ends did it. Okay, mm-hmm. so the same number of tight ends did it as running backs and wide receivers combined. Mm-hmm. That's what two point tight end premium does. So McBride, who we get in this trade, right. is an absolute stud wide receiver. And again, same things we we're talking about. St. Brown lives in this theory of mine and yours. We pay up a little bit extra. McBride's 24. So in literally in these two things together, we bring in St. Brown and we bring in McBride to a win now team. We pay up, but they're 24. We bring right. in elite dynasty assets. We make trades for right. these guys under 24. So in a two point tight end premium league, McBride after week eight, when he, uh, before week eight, when Ertz wasn't hurt yet, the, the highest percent snaps total that he had in the first half of the season was 58. Yeah. That was the highest. A lot of them were a lot lower than that, 40%, stuff like that. After Ertz goes down in week eight, he was up to like 80% snaps the rest of the year and in the 90s in a lot of games. And so he had 21.5 points per game. McBride did in the second half. Right. I got from week eight to the end in just PPR 15 points Love a it. game. Okay, right? just PPR. Just PPR, straight up PPR, one point. That's what you want out of your best receiver, not (laughs) named Tyreek Hill and Justin Jefferson. Right. Right. So, and then, you and know, then what was it for, for two point? What was the average? 21.5. 21. 21. That's QB numbers, folks. Exactly. I mean, Brock Purdy was 18 and a half. Yeah. And he's our best quarterbacks. Brock Purdy's 18 and a half. Hawkinson was 21. And that's, that includes the game where he got hurt halfway through. So he only had 40% of those snaps that week because he went out in halftime, at halftime with his knee torn up. But he still averaged 21 with a low week that week. So uh, that just to show like McBride, and we all know Hawkinson dominated last year, but Hawkinson had two points less than Mahomes right. as a court. Like basically it all boils down to quarter, like tight ends, the good tight ends can score like quarterbacks. And that's right. what I wanted to get at. 11 quarterbacks went over 300 in this league last year and four tight ends did it, which is like, so cl- like that's those numbers shouldn't be th- there in a normal league. Th- all the quarterbacks score the points right? and the tight ends don't. Yep. And two, so in a, in a 1.4, 1.5 tight end, which is becoming a lot more normal, it's going to be obviously a little bit less than that. But in this league, 
which is what exactly why we're you we didn't create the league we're in it we didn't set the settings we just read the league read the rules right which is exactly what casey was saying read the rules read the settings and figure out what to explore and then go go look at the scoring like a lot of leagues a lot of a sleeper mfl you can see it'll show you what the the people in this scoring setting did last year even if this is a startup a lot of the times you can go see because the scoring settings are set so it'll it'll great point it'll put the um the, you know what those guys scored last year in and then you could check who the high scores are and then you can go oh you know some some lights there's will go a ton off, of tight ends up here yeah, and look there's variance every year and, and things go up and down you know yeah. cd lamb's probably not gonna score 400 points again this sure. year you know and maybe it's not tj Hawkinson, but i digress you know from week eight the reason again we picked mcbride as the guy because in anybody's circle he's anywhere from tight end one to tight end three at this point right for mm -hmm. the for the most part somebody could argue and say hey may, maybe he stinks and marvin harrison's going to take everything but i don't think so so like you said from week eight he had 85 target from week eight on he had 85 targets that was third 66 receptions that was second 655 yards that was third only three tds so mm -hmm. he did all that scoring with only three it's TDs. good point great in point. there great point um he had the third most uh yak 338 the fourth most uh, yards per route run, 4.08, and he was first in first downs mm -hmm. uh, with 34. And I like the first down stat because that just shows me that you're going to him in stat in, in spots. I like that too. Chains. I really like the yak because what these days now that we got some advanced metrics and we got some guys that we got these nerds on these spreadsheets really looking in, we figure out the the elite of the elite tight ends. They all have this athletic background that right. we have to have, like that right. you know, and so. They're, they're, you need that run after the catch ability, that to tackle breaking ability. And I went back and what before this happened, I went back and watched every target of McBride in 2023. Mm -hmm. Not just catches. I wanted to see the targets. I wanted to see the good and the bad plays. And basically, just in, in, in if you're, you know, bringing some logic to this, you're like, okay, uh, they didn't have Marvin Harrison Jr. yet. Sure. And he didn't have any good wide receivers that we know of. Right. You know, we love the well, idea. they only had one of those. They only added Marv. Everybody else is the same. Pretty right, much, right, exactly. Know? They did add Zay. I'll take so, that back. Zay Jones. So, obviously, you know, Ertz got hurt. McBride came on strong. Came on at about the same time that the, the quarterback comes back from his knee injury. But as the year goes on, when you're watching all these targets from McBride, obviously the first thing you see is just like it, he jumps off the page when you when he gets a target and he catches the ball and he turns up field. Like he's just he looks way more fluid and more athletic than Hawkinson. Right. You know he looks a, a, he looks fluid. Well, and it's a guy who caught ninety balls in college. Is, is in one year, right? Not total, right? Like that's a good total for right. tight ends in college. Like that's one year. He was basically a receiver out there, but he's a big. And body. so, towards the end of the year in these targets, you can see the defense is closing in right and he's still crushing it but like they don't have anybody else to take the defense away so it's like kyler murray to who mcbride kyler hurry murray to who mcbride and the defense is all around him so like oh, marvin harrison can help right you know and so it's I, the mcbride breakout and, and it's cool because you could hear the the play-by-play uh, -play guys like at the beginning of the season it's like oh there's there's mcbride there's mcbride mcbride you know later on in the in the reel there you're getting later you know week 13 14 15 you're like and that mcbride continues his breakout look yeah, you know yeah. and there's mcbride again he's a superstar on his team right. and, you know so you could see like the year unfold you could hear it while you're watching yeah. this you know 20 minute video of all his targets or whatever yeah and, um, and i didn't good mean, time. i didn't mean to disrespect zay, zay jones name if you've been watching this podcast for a while big zay jones fans shout out matt kelly love Love it. Say my name. Love it. But when all zoomed back out, it's basically, you know, I think I think Zay can catch some balls. I think Marvin's going to be a great pro. But McBride is the two on this offense, if not going to be the one in a one lot. B. One B. You know, uh, who cares? One B. In, in some of these games. And I think another part of this is this was a, you know, the overlooked part of this is, hey, for the St. Brown side of things, and we're talking about these elite assets, the Lions went from being a player you didn't really want a whole lot of people on to like, mm, Lions are super fucking interesting. Right. The Cardinals are potentially on that trajectory because the Cardinals were not a good team last year. But if you watch the Cardinals play, they gave you hell for that whole game. And then it usually just kind of fell apart at the end. They just weren't good enough to put together four quarters. Right. Yeah. They but beat. Gannon took all sorts of shit, just like Campbell took all sorts of shit for saying, pew, 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 you know, Love being it. a goofy Love dummy. Love it. But he's putting together a defense over there. He can he can coordinate. It was a major blow to Philly losing Gannon and Steichen. And sure. both of those guys went and excelled their first Massive year. Massive success. And now they've put together a staff. I like where it's going. I like what they're doing. I'm buying in on Cardinals down low. We only got to see a little bit of Kyler um, in this offense. They were 23rd in passing touchdowns, 19th in total 
uh, scoring. I think those numbers can all go up um, for, for them kind of moving forward mm -hmm. and what they're building on. They were 22nd in points per game. I think, like I said, I think all, all that kind of stuff, I think we're going to see a, a little push forward. Now, you know, I think the division's going to stay pretty strong. Um, but I think they're going to be very competitive in that division. I think they're going to go win a bunch of games that they probably shouldn't win this game this year. You know, well, they were winning some games early in the year last right. year. They shouldn't win. I I took the season under on the win total, and they right. got me good. Yeah. So we'll we'll be interesting to see what the I'm drawing a blank on the OC. I know he's a 35 year old guy. Who was on the Browns and, and the Vikings. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to Patreon.com/slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Kyler, I like what they were kind of doing with Kyler at the end of the season with him and the way they were kind of using Kyler. And I think, you know, we, we, we now have a... We didn't just go get a schlub tight end who crushed it with a, with a schlub quarterback or whoever. Right. We we have now Kyler Murray is a guy who could be a top five scorer in this league We've and seen put it. up fantasy points in bunches. Mm -hmm. um, and McBride could be tied to that, and I think they're going to be a, a higher scoring offense. So just kind of a, you know a little part there that I, I wanted to push that I, I think Zona a little on the come up uh, uh, here. I like I like kind of what they're doing. So let's we we our trade in this was. Two point tight end premium. We had the one hundred three that we guarded all last year. Yep. Right. And we so we traded the one three from McBride straight up. Right. So there was other offers and there was a back and forth, but we gave the one three from McBride. So on the reason we set that up, and so we wanted to take a second to give you the theory behind of like the when you're playing dynasty, obviously you need to know your rules and point settings. So that brings us to being the two point tight end. And you can, with a big starting lineup, you can start, you know, four or five of these guys in a week. We have Hawkinson. We have Kyle Pitts. We have Pat Fryermuth, who didn't do much last year. We're expecting to bounce back. We have Dalton Schultz. And we have Isaiah Likely. Those kind of guys. But bring in another stud to get. We, if you see, when you see Hawkinson and Hope and Pitts and what Pitts might can, can be this year. And, but you bring in Hawkinson. But now we got McBride. Like, that's a guy who averaged 20 points a game in this format when given an opportunity. Right. So, when if you told me at the we're sitting at the one three in a super flex league that I could trade that I could draft basically a quarterback type of player, you know that's if I could get if I could get Brock Purdy at the one three and plug him in my tight end spot because you're going to start two quarterbacks anyway, mm -hmm. and you might as well plug if you can plug in more quarterback type scoring type people in your lineup the more the merrier. Right. So obviously we wanted Malik Neighbors. Sure, Jaden Daniels would look good on paper on our team. And nobody thinks Malik Neighbors isn't going to work out. Right. You take out that slim chance of him not being good as a rookie, which he is going to be good. He's a stud. Right. You take out the chance with of Jaden Daniels. Jayden, I think Jayden, he'll, be, he'll put up good fantasy points. I do too. But there's you, unknowns. Every time McBride catches the ball, he gets two points. Every time Neighbors catches the ball, he gets one point right. in this and, league. And he's unknown. Uh, you know, and the situation, you know, all that kind of stuff. We we now like just like you painted it. You're getting he averaged 21 points per game. Sure, it, you know, barely with Kyler being 100 percent and acclimated to everything that was going on. So I just I feel like at the baseline we stay somewhere between 19 and 22 points with McBride averaging over the course of the year. And how 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 does that you know screwing anything up? And, and well, even if it goes, even if it's 16 points a game, man, right. like that's. If Neighbors comes out and he averages 16 fantasy points a game, that would be like a top five wide receiver season ever. And right. it's not, I'm not saying it can't happen. It's probably unlikely. Right. And he, but I think he's going to get the targets to do it. But McBride is just, is, he's safer and he takes another tight end off the market, puts another right. one on our team. That's another part of it is there's only a few of them. And if we can corner, if we have three or four of them, then that's taking them away from the rest of the league. With that and he's big 24. Point total, and he's you know, 24. It's not like we got. It's not like we went out and bought a 28 year old Mark Andrews right. with it. And, you know? and and really to us, the question really was: Do we want Brock Bowers? Could we trade back a pick and pick up Brock Bowers, or take Brock Bowers at the one three, or take McBride? And of course, I love the mystery box of Bowers. It's awesome. But once again, this the way I viewed this trade was basically Bowers maybe plus a little for McBride, and it was like, dude, I've already seen McBride do it. I'm I'm good. Like, yeah. I'm okay with missing the Bowers train and saying I'm gonna take the known, you know, twenty one point average sure. for through eight weeks, uh, 
Trey McBride in a situation that I kind of don't hate. I right? have taken I have taken every opportunity to say how I still I love everything about Bowers and I'm not letting the Raiders draft pick of Mc, of, of Bowers do anything to me. But like once you line it up and you're like Bowers Raiders maybe this maybe that quarterback situation et cetera et cetera and you look at what McBride just did like is is McBride the maybe a little bit less of a physically talented prospect maybe but we just it, yeah potentially he doesn't have the 16 17 year old Georgia highlights that McBride does right you're not taking an end around to the house in the SEC no he did not do that but he did just have like 80 catches in eight games you know he like whatever 66 that, and 85 targets and all and but all those all those second half of the season stats you just read was second and third place and second and third place and second and third right. place you know so he just i mean he literally broke out to be a superstar we all expect the raiders to do something soon but like what if brock bowers kyle pitts is us mm. and you know and has a desmond ritter type season right and let alone or two of them, you know, two of them, yeah, because that's what Kyle Pitts did to it us, out, you know, right? So and and they're and that's staff change, a regime change. Exactly. Now everything's reset, and you're like, God damn it, how long am I gonna have to wait for this? We don't have to do that when we brought right, to, and because we want to win this year, and we can still win next year and the year after with McBride because he's not old, right? So to, I just want to give you a couple more ideas of some trades before we get out of here, um, and then we're gonna talk about the the end of this trade or the end of this team build and where we're heading um, as far as some trades that we made for veterans uh, before the draft. But here's some Dynasty Daddy trades, and, and the cool thing, again, about them is that I can go in there and I can filter it to two-point tight end trades. Love it. There's obviously some good values in there because some bad trades go down. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, you In know, any, any, any right, format, any right. league, and any you, format. You could be saying that DJ Moore was, trade was a terrible trade. I hate, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Here's a couple I just wanted to throw at you. Three firsts for McBride. Uh, two firsts for McBride. These are two different trades that went down. Yeah, well, McBride for two firsts is easy. It's not even close. It's McBride. And out of context, again, if if you told me that you're going to give me three random firsts for Justin Jefferson, because that's how you have to look at this. The way in two point tight end premium, McBride scoring like Justin Jefferson. Am I going to randomly take without any context to my team? If I if I'm a terrible team and I have no other good players, and McBride's my only good player, maybe I'm taking in those first round picks. But in this scenario, this is the exact opposite scenario of us giving away all those assets for St. Brown, and I, I'm taking McBride with the, no context. Yeah, that McBride for 105 and Parham, so that's a little closer to kind of what we were doing. Yep. Kincaid for McBride? I get it, straight up. Right. Um, I, in our league, we... So we, these are real trades. that went, I just want to give you guys more examples because we get a lot of, hey, give us examples. So I'm giving Well, there you, you go. So, like somebody was a McBride believer and somebody was a Kincaid right. believer. And in this league. About the same age. In this league, McBride was on our radar because we wanted to go trade for a stud tight end. And we, we really wanted to use these assets that we had in the, in the draft, draft uh, in, the, in the rookie draft. Um, but he put the the fella put McBride on the tra on the trade block, mm -hmm. so he teed it up for us, and we got the negotiations going. Plus, Dalton Kincaid, owner in this league, there's no chance he's trading him. Right. Uh, this was a fun one, McBride and DK for Jamar Chase in a three and a four. McBride and DK for Jamar Chase. And, uh, yeah, give me McBride and DK all day long. Yeah, I I would tend to agree. I mean, that's why that's why we like this trade. Uh, McBride, Debo, and Roman Wilson for. Brian Robinson, Christian Kirk, Ricky Pearsall, and uh, McBride. Brock Bowers. Okay, well, that's my, I don't know where you're going with the last one. <laughs> yeah, but I, I put it in yeah. there because Bowers was in there, and we okay. were we were talking about maybe. But, McBride you know. and Debo was on the same side of that trade. Mm -hmm. McBride and, and they got Roman. McBride and Debo and Roman Wilson for who? Uh, Brian Robinson, Christian Kirk, Ricky Pearsall. So, like a, a nice little starter in Kirk. A B Rob could be good. Pearsall for the future, and and Bowers, you know, there. And, you know, Debo value right now is down, so you don't get a whole lot of trade about respect on Debo, but that was a good pickup by the McBride side because yeah. you're hopefully in the winning. And Pearsall, um, everybody loves Pearsall right now. So right. You, you package up Pearsall and Bowers together. That's a fun trade. Yeah. Um, I mean, Pearsall's, you know, you're, you're not most people aren't going to value under him a first. Bowers is probably at least a first because he's in that, like, top protected area. So sure. it might take extra plus a first. So, you know, I kind of get it there a little bit there. And mm -hmm. then here's one more, and then we'll move on to the last part of this pod here. McBride, Brock Purdy, and Terry McLaurin for Jalen Hurts and Dalton Schultz. So that's, it went up for the big time QB there. Right. That's a that's a good increase. On, I mean, I I got to take Brock Purdy and McBride. I do. I I I love Hurts and I love that top end. But I mean, I think if you think Brock, that Brock Purdy is going to get paid to stay in this system, they already tried the Trey Lance thing. 
that bring in the ridiculous athlete that can mm-hmm. run and be like, let's break this whole thing and let's show them what we can do. And then and obviously for a lot of things, it wasn't Trey Lance's fault. And then they're like, you know what? This guy, Purdy, just throws it over. He levels the football like nobody else that could, you know, he throws it over the linebacker and in between the safeties and he hits these guys in stride and he plays our system perfectly. And hopefully they're saying he looks strapped this year and he's been working out. Like, let's let the man, let the man grow. I would, I would probably take that. Let me go back and throw a quick the the Bowers trade just a second ago. That if you think about how hard it is to trade Debo sometimes, that you you had to give away McBride, but you got back Bowers and Pearsall. You know, you're not if if you well, that's can two teams probably passing in the night going opposite directions. Maybe right? if you kind of what those if, that looks if you like. You can a little mentally bit. if you can mentally put yourself in the same like if I can, if I can see Bowers becoming close to you know if I can if I'm a Bowers huge Bowers guy. And I know how powerful McBride is, but I can't get anything for Debo. And I just used him as a carrier, you know. I just attached Debo to McBride and shipped him over here and got Bowers, who can be McBride, hopefully, Mm -hmm. and then got back Pearsall Plus. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Christian Kirk, some depth, and Brian Robinson, some depth. But like Pearsall, everybody's he's everybody's darling right Right, now. Good Lord, let let one of those other receivers get traded off the Niners. You know what I mean? Like, there's your there's your trade right there. It wasn't McBride for Bowers. Right. It was Debo and getting value for Debo. Right. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I like you that. know what I mean? Good, good comeback there. So, to wrap this up, and we'll get to the last part here of exchanging some veterans, and we'll be brief with that uh, to get out of here. But basically, the idea was we're ready to win. We're ready to push our chips in. Let's, let's see how many top 25 scorers we can put on the team that's what we're trying to do right now so we went through and and figured that out christian mccaffrey was one of those ones that we read that went over 300 he's on our team absolutely um we just added saint brown he's one of those guys he's on our team we have tj hawkinson he's one of those guys top 25 scorer he's on our team b john robinson on our team we think he can be one of those guys the falcons are talking that he can be one of those guys our quarterbacks are obviously in that well, range as well so right, we got all of a sudden we have five to six guys and then we have nico and tank dell together yep. as well um so we have a good pairing there um and then we hope we have a hopeful of kyle pitts can be up there and, and be you know collecting uh receptions as well go. so we have a little hopeful there and then friar coming back um potentially getting some volume is maybe being the Dalton number Schultz two there. Is very likely but we have we have brock purdy and we have deshaun watson and we have kirk cousins which in another um dynasty strategy quick conversation is with four flexes and a super flex and given the fact that it's two tight end points so you got your tight ends make score a lot more points it washes out the value of the quarterbacks so like we had we coming into this we had the one three the 110 the two four and we had decided and made our mindset shift into saying hey we're gonna we have a championship team we're gonna spend our first round pick next year so we had four big bullets and part of that might have been improving our quarterback situation do you, I'd love to be a little bit better than Kirk Cousins and Deshaun Watson and Brock Purdy. Mm-hmm. But because you can start four flexes and in those flexes can be tight ends that catch the ball and get two points every time they catch it, that washes out that weekly value of saying, hey, I need the best quarterbacks I can get. Right. Right. Yeah. So I just wanted to Makes point sense. that out. Yeah. You know, if it Makes was two tight, if it's two flexes, your quarterbacks matter a lot more. Right. Right. Less flexes, less flexibilities of what you can do there quarterback value you know, quarterback value is always going to stay strong and super flex but you know uh, we we More saw starters. it as, we saw it as diminished a little here so yeah we reverse engineered this uh show for your pleasure and now we're going to kind of talk about some veterans that we acquired because we were we were scoring elite points last year and just marred by injuries so we wanted we were like all right well let's let's go we're okay to go buy some veterans we identified the rebuilders who's going to let those guys go for a little cheaper and then kind of the idea here is we weren't trying to spend any capital, and this was going down before the draft. Right? Yeah, so and we're, we're trying to add pieces to our roster that maybe nobody really wants, and, and what we're trying to give away is kind of the maybes, right? Right, right. We wanted to give away some young maybes, and like you said, add in to a team that went to the playoffs last year. Hands down, we were one of the best teams in the league. We got killed by injuries. Two out of our three quarterbacks was on IR. Hawkinson got hurt going into the to the uh, playoffs, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so we were, we were crushed with injuries, and we wanted to bring in some depth. So we traded a lot of our young maybes. 
We traded. And I hate giving. I like. Uh, we have all these guys for a reason because I like them. Oh yeah. And we, I hate giving away three of these wide receivers, but it, but we, it is what it, it is. You know? Giving giving away these young players, having that capital. We and like we didn't want to trade away our draft picks. This was two months before the draft. The, so this was in April. So this was two months before our rookie draft that just happened. So we give away Josh Downs. Demario Douglas, who's getting love from yeah, Sleeper I right now. I love Demario Douglas. He's on every single one of my teams. Trey Palmer. That was before the Bucks sure. uh, made a draft pick of, of their another wide receiver. Mm-hmm. We gave away Christian Watson, right. who has all the upside in the world. All of it. Damian Pierce and A.J. Dillon, a couple of running backs that were just, you know, sitting there kind of clogging us yeah, up for take, a minute. Take these. Take these guys and, you know, we kind of make that package look better that we're giving away. So what did we get? We gave away the four young wide receivers with tons of upside, but right now – necessarily out you know it's tough to put them in any lineup obviously christian right. watson can get hot and i, I hope he All, crushes but D- douglas could come out here and catch a bunch of balls downs could come out here and catch a bunch of balls we're just there's a there's still a little bit of a mystery about what is going to happen with those guys what their roles are going to be and what their team is going to kind of no doubt how they're going to feature them, i love so. downs you take downs and put him on the texans in the tank dale role he could be crushing but he's not he's stuck with anthony richardson and i don't know and, and, and we haven't seen enough right? right we don't know how much he can facilitate we're moving away young question marks we're bringing in some veteran depth because we still have a lot of draft capital to use later this was two months ago we bring in christian kirk for that wide receiver depth because we really only had nico and tank dale um and uh so we bring in christian kirk and we bring in alvin kamara Mm -hmm. and we bring in Derek carr and hunter henry so we literally bring in a starter at every position hunter henry you can clown on him if you want but he has got some really good numbers in two point tight end he's not old and he just got paid by the patriots and they don't have any like quality veteran wide receiver to demand the ball you bring in Derek carr who again with five flex with with four flexes and a super flex your wide receiver, your team is going to be depleted by the time you get to the bottom of your lineup. Looking for so, if you there's no chance you're going to have a team good enough unless you're not playing with real you know league mates to have to not need Derek Carr if your other quarterbacks get hurt. Right. So even if he's out there averaging 15 or 16 points a game in a start 11 lineup, you need that. So that was a you know we lost we had two quarterbacks on IR. So to, for us we were looking like yeah give me a fourth one. Right. Give me somebody right. if, if if all hell breaks loose and we're down to the bits in our wits in at the end of the year, we'll have Derek Carr. So we got four quarterbacks now. So we brought in Carr. Hunter Henry is like our ninth tight end. Mm-hmm. But in two point, he could definitely be a starter. And then we got Alvin Kamar and Christian Kirk, which are great depth pieces. And we got Gabe Davis as a wide receiver coming in, yeah. you know, before it goes down. But like we still have ifs and maybes on the bench, but we're not as many. We we, we got rid of some and we have we have guys um, like Christian Kirk is one of my favorites. That's why I traded for him. Uh, right. Because all he does is go out there and gets you 12 to 15 points. And, I, I, you know, I think him and Trevor have a nice chemistry. And I think he's going to be, he might not be the quote unquote wide receiver one for them, but he's going to lead them in pretty much every yeah, category dude, if, you if look he stays at, healthy. If you look at Kirk's game log last year, the first four weeks before he gets hurt, it's not 12 points, dude. It's 16. Yeah. And he had a zero to start off with. And then right. everybody was like, whoa, what's happening? And then all of a sudden it was like, boom, 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 boom. Four boom. weeks in a row at 16 points type. So type I, I think just it's consistency with Kirk and he's not super old right okay, yep, so exactly. we're still kind of middle of the road age with him now Kamara's old but Kamara we bought because it was like hey let's get him and we he if he gets us 17 points a game 16 points a game oh, ridiculous we're good like, if he gets fine. us 12 points a game it's right. still better than any running back we had on the bench so right. and he's, he's old but he's he could crush again this year um, and Carr's not young, but he's not falling off the face of the earth anytime soon. Right, and I just want to put Hunter Henry in perspective real quick. And you may say, well, what Hunter Henry, and which is we got him as a throw-in essentially, but Hunter Henry scored 21 points, 22 points, 5, 13, then a bunch of not great, some threes, some sixes, some eights, then 17, 22, and 26. So, at, And then he didn't play a chunk of games. So like out of like a third of his games were double digits and, and 20 points. Right. And now we're moving into a new era of Patriots and he's one of the you know the elder veterans on this team who can just be a nice reliable pass catching He's probably going to get the most consistent targets. He could um, lead the he could literally lead the team in targets. So he he just felt like that's an easy 10 to 12 points I think for Hunter Henry and then if he scores that's a 20 point game, you know. So it just felt like that's a sneaky kind of play. A fourth to, flex to starter. Grab you a fourth flex a if fourth you need flex it. Fourth flex starter. Come on man. If All you right. Need it. So we can get past that. So that was a good 
that was a good depth trade. That, that, was, that kicked off when we decided we're going to go for the win now for sure because right. we had a lot of assets. We had a really good team, and we had all these guys on the bench with some maybes. And we packaged those guys up, and we brought in the win now cast. You know, like that's literally the bus of win now players uh, for cheap, and we brought they're all undervalued, and we brought in four undervalued players. Christian Kirk's getting some love, but everybody else on that list was left for dead. So we'd made that trade, and the last one, quick, easy trade that we made was we gave our 2025 second, so our next year second, and we brought in Hollywood Brown, who's going into the uh, you know Chiefs situation and has all of the upside in the world in that offense. And uh, the, so we've made those two trades. So now we got Christian Kirk and Hollywood Brown as depth pieces at wide receiver. And what that did was – we made all those trades and we didn't give up any of the draft picks in this year's draft, which we you saw us tr- turn into Trey McBride and and St. Brown. I can get another. I can get a twenty five second by the end of next year, right? You know, I'm not. I'm oh not, yeah. You know, that's so that's always a nice little. Hey, can I push us down the road? So we got next year second for Hollywood. I know some people are out on Hollywood. I am so very much in on Hollywood. You know, he he just was in a bad situation last year with some bad quarterback play. He had a bunch of unrealized air yards. I think he was like up in like the th- third or seventh or something like that. Um, still was his down the field targets uh, were, were through the roof. They just weren't, he was, it was so inaccurate for him because he wasn't really playing with Kyler. By the time Kyler got back in there, Hollywood was kind of hurt and Kyler was just coming back on. They were missing each other a little bit yep. and then Hollywood just went out. Now Hollywood's going to go into a situation where I think he's just going to be the man. They're going to re- he's going to re- him and Worthy are going to help reopen that vertical passing game of Kansas City. And we don't know Rice might miss a couple of games. You know I think Kansas City coming in throwing second, first most in the league. Hollywood Brown in there if he can be healthy. I, I just felt like that was that was some easy points and his values down. So it's Kirk great. and Kirk and Hollywood are two of my biggest buys, and, and there that there it is. I bought them. Money where my mouth is. So. Right. Well, it was a great gamble giving up the two next year on Hollywood on a win now team. Right. Uh, and then the last trade we did in in draft, uh, we traded uh, basically two six for Senate. We gave uh, up. Or, sorry, we gave up Schultz. Yeah, we get um, we we traded away Schultz and got the draft pick to be able to take Ben Sennett. Right. While it, it was on the clock at two six or no two five, it was really the two six because the one thirteen was gone, was taken off the board by the commissioner for that. So, right. So there we go. Grab another younger tight end. We switch it out for Schultz, who I like Schultz. I don't want to trade Schultz necessarily. I think Schultz is going to have a good year, and then Diggs leaves, and he's tied to that again, and sure. have another good year. I think I think Schultz is a good player. Um, and in tight end premium with two points, he's going to be startable this year. Promise. Yeah. You know, especially if you got a deeper, deeper lineup like this is. But Senate is just if he comes out and like explodes, catches, has the first five weeks or a middle five weeks or a middle three weeks that are good. Like either everybody's going to be beating down our door and that's going to turn into a first really freaking fast. Right. Or we're like, yeah, bitches, we got another one. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, another one. Ben and well, and Senate's dripping with that athletic profile that I've, uh, that all the people are loving right now. And like you, so it, all he needs to do is, and he's sitting with Zach Ertz again. So like, and and why would you not like? McBride a, just sat with him. Yeah. <laughs> why would you not like the idea of a young, you know, all world potential type tight end that may or may not work out, but he's going to be able to sit behind an all pro veteran savvy veteran knows how to get open knows how to play the game knows how to prepare knows how to study defenses knows how to know what the quarterback's looking for why would you not want ben to be working with Ertz for a while i don't right. care if ben senate does anything for 10 weeks at all me too i don't care if he does anything this year yeah but he could and all it takes is a little bit right right whereas you know nobody's going to be giving schultz a whole bunch of love and, and we got a ton of schultz in other places right. that was that was a slight diversification tra- type trade too we get, move off of schultz a little bit on this league have him in tons of other leagues anyway so like i'm pulling for him i hope he does great and but you know it gives us a ben sending in a two-point tight end catch is a is you know it's tasty yeah all right well that's gonna do it for today we appreciate you appreciate all uh, all the new people who check us out be sure to like subscribe comment below um if you're not on the discord there's a free discord there's a paid discord through the patreon the five dollar holler you get three extra episodes a month uh, we, plus we have ADP we're going through our dynasty rankings right now we got rookie rankings over there Jay Wayne has built a nice little uh, draft kit for the rookies with all sorts of great stats that you have access to over there so a lot of, lot of fun stuff over there we're doing roster reviews uh, when we can we're about to jump into the dynasty daddy roster reviews and those are going to be roster reviews on steroids those are going to be a lot of fun about to introduce a $10 tier here pretty soon uh, for your pleasure but lots and lots of extra stuff we got plenty of mock drafts we got our own ADP over there we're always mocking um, and of course you want to subscribe because we will go live. We will hit some live mocks and all that stuff. And then you don't miss any of this content. So love it. Appreciate you. And we'll catch you next time. Peace.